Now we have uh, Mr. Sambone with uh, Layer 7 DOS attacks and defenses. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you. So um, we're done talking about that for the moment. Let me go back to here. All right. So um, all right. And there we are. Okay. So that's I, I teach at City College San Francisco. I teach uh, ethical hacking and uh, uh, computer forensics and uh, used to teach Cisco classes and things like that. All the basic networking stuff and security stuff. So and I'm on Twitter. Twitter is awesome. If you're not on Twitter, just join Twitter. Don't mess around. Anyway, um, and uh, anyway, uh, so um, Linus Thorvalds said the security community is just a circus. That's, he's sort of famous for saying sort of uh, the things that, that make entertaining sound bites because they sound kind of foolish. But anyway, I don't know if that's true of all fields of security, but in my field it is absolutely true that it is a circus. Denial of service is ridiculous. There are a bunch of cartoon characters out there just making the world absurd, and I find it very amusing, so I, I like playing with it. So first I'll talk about some of the characters in the current DOS circus, which is ridiculous and a lot of fun. I should make this thing higher. Oh, I can, all right. And sorry, just good. And uh, then there's three kinds of DOS I want to talk about. Layer 4 is the old-fashioned DDoS, which is mostly what you see in the world today, where you take thousands of machines and make a botnet, and you take down somebody and uh, they have to stop all those packets. But there's a new kind, Layer 7 DOS, been popular over the last couple of years, um, where you only need to send a few packets, like one packet per second, and you take down a server, because you carefully choose packets that do a lot of damage to the server. And there's another one that I'm very excited about, the Link Local DOS, um, which is a router advertisement attack that kills every Windows machine on a, on a network. And that one I thought was so dangerous that when I came across it, I'm not the discoverer exactly, I thought I might be, but I didn't write the tool, I just ran a tool that was sort of obscure. I secretly contacted Microsoft, like you're supposed to do, and said, hey guys, maybe you'd like to patch this. And the friends I had in Microsoft immediately got me to the right people, and they very quickly got back to me and said, oh no, we've known about that for a long time, we're not gonna do anything about it. I said, well, okay, fine then, then I'll tell the world and give it to my students for homework and everything else. So that's what I'm doing. So, um, and that is the most powerful attack. One attacker brings down a whole network of machines, which seems like a problem to me, but apparently not to Microsoft. Anyway, so um, the DOS circus. Of course, you got this guy, Assange, with WikiLeaks, um, publishing a whole lot of secrets that the US government does not want him to publish. And that creates a stir in the world as various people get all excited and decide either to be on his side or against his side. And for some reason, an enormous amount of them decide that the cool way to support their cause is to take down a bunch of websites, like these characters. These anonymous guys originally just posted um, obscene jokes on 4chan, but now they decided to take down websites to save the world, um, supporting free speech through denial of service, which makes sense to them, although not really to me. But anyway, um, so, they started Operation Payback, attacked Scientology, and they mostly did this with the low orbit ion cannon, which has got to be the most ridiculous tool in the world. You could just open a browser to the site you hate and press F5, 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 and if enough people did that, that would take it down. The low orbit ion cannon just automates that. It presses F5 for you. That's about all it does. Anyway, um, but then Aaron Barr decided he would, he would find these guys and announced that he knew who they were, um, and so, they decided to take him down, and this represented a step up in Anonymous's um, activities. Instead of just taking him down with distributed denial of service with thousands of people using the lower but ion cannon, they got a group of three or four people who were actually relatively competent. So instead of using a technique that is ridiculously out of date, they got up to things that are only about 10 years out of date. They used SQL injection and social engineering, which is very powerful. They took, through SQL injection, so I understand it, they took over the mail server, and then they sent emails pretending to be the owner of the company, saying, hey, I forgot my password. Oh, I forgot my username. Hey, please turn off the firewall, open a port, and they just did all that because it was apparently coming from his email account. And after that, they owned everything, so they dumped his whole email logs wildly to the world, which is fantastically irresponsible, and that is the whole point of Anonymous, is to do fantastically irresponsible things, and then you laugh, ha, ha, ha. Anyway, so um, they leaked out the emails, and the emails, in their mind, justified their actions because this guy was evil beyond belief. He was writing rootkits for the government, for the Chamber of Commerce, he was going to make fake social media profiles and trick people. He just had all these fantastically unethical and probably highly illegal things he was going to do. So everybody fled for the hills 
trying to pretend that they had nothing to do with this when they were all deeply in the thick of it, like Bank of America and Chamber of Commerce and such. But now we're all saying they had no idea who was doing any of that, even though the emails show that they did know that, but they're maintaining plausible deniability. Anyway, now they've taken another step up. Earlier this week, Monday, they decided to take down the Chamber of Commerce. And instead of just using the lower red ion cannon, they used some relatively intelligent techniques here. They used um, a Drupal exploit and again hacked into it. So Anonymous does seem to be getting smarter in their attacks. Um, I've, I've been commenting about this stuff for about a year. It's important to me. Um, and a lot of people misunderstand me that I'm on one side or the other. These guys are criminals. And they've been getting caught and going to prison. And I just should lay off that. And the thing that really bothers me about them is they trick children into doing this. They publish websites and say, you can download the Lower Bird Iron Cannon and help us save the world. And they tell you, you won't get caught because when the website goes down, they'll lose all the server logs. And they totally do get caught. And the, the, the only reason they aren't all in prison is because the government can't be bothered to prosecute them all, in my opinion. But the logs are certainly there. The tool is completely obvious. It just sends thousands of packets per second right from your IP address. You can't claim it was a virus or any of their other lame, stupid excuses. They're just a small core, a core group of grown-ups recruiting teenagers and throwing them to the wolves. It's cynical and cruel and wrong. Anyway, but it's also stupid. And, you know, this is like when I see, this is the thing in common among people involved in law enforcement at any level, which I sort of am, although I'm not a cop and being in network security, to see somebody do something and say, well, you ought to have better ethics to do that. And if you don't have better ethics, you ought to have better skills than to do it so stupidly. And these guys fail both tests. Um, especially before they started doing this stuff, when it was just the lower but iron cannon, I say, oh, come on, guys. Is this a joke or what? Anyway, the jester. This is why a lot of people think I support the jester, because the jester is just as illegal and headed for big trouble, but he's smarter. His techniques are technically interesting. He's ahead of me, technically. I wish he would lay off the black hat stuff and come help us study denial of service attacks, because he has a good one, and he's, he's smart enough to port it to a cell phone, too, which I'm not. I've been trying to port mine to my iPad, and I haven't succeeded yet. Anyway, so he's, this guy's also going to save the world through denial of service, but he's ex-military, and he uses Layer 7 denial of service, I believe, although he has never explicitly said what he does, but he only needs one machine. So he does not need to recruit thousands of teenagers to do his work for him. But then he brings down websites, and he's on the right, whereas Anonymous is on the left. So he's bringing down Islamic Jihadist websites, WikiLeaks, and anybody that he feels is opposing the military. Um, and he talks about these things on Twitter. His tool automatically posts these tweets when websites go down. And uh, he brought down WikiLeaks for a whole day from one machine. So, um, and I was convinced that was him. He does go to the chat room, so I does this, and he said, here, prove it, I'll turn it off. WikiLeaks came back up. I'm turning it back on. WikiLeaks went back down again. So I believe it was one person controlling it. Now, some people accuse him of doing this with a botnet, and I cannot prove that is not true, but I know there is no need for a botnet to do this, not for the last couple of years. Layer 7 denial service attacks have been here, and so I believe it's there. Anyway, here's Netcraft's WikiLeaks out for a day and a half from this one guy. And that's the gesture. And he and Anonymous have been at each other's throats and doing dirty tricks to wipe each other out and such. Um, and he's on Twitter frequently. He has a blog and all that jazz. Um, so he decided to take down Westboro Baptist. Now, these people are incredibly offensive in every possible way. And as far as anybody can tell, that's their business model, is to go to funerals and pick it and irritate someone until somebody finally punches them in the face and then they sue and make money. But anyway, um, so he hates them. So he took them down for eight weeks. And he claims that's the longest denial of service attack in history. And it may very well be true, but he did that from a single 3G cell phone, taking down four websites, uh, which I also believe is probably true because I know you could do it because even I could do it and even any of my students could do it. Now, I do not know exactly how his tool works. But I know the general principles that make such a thing possible, and that's why it seems to me pretty important. Um, so here's the old-fashioned layer 4 DDoS. Many attackers to one target, and pretty much all you do here is consume all the bandwidth. Um, they, so then these guys refuse service to WikiLeaks, Amazon, and Visa, and a bunch of other people. Uh, Anonymous decided to take them down. Um, so they took their low orbit ion cannon, which is just sort of like a bunch of villagers storming a castle by throwing rocks at it and using pitchforks. And um, this is the thing it runs. It looks sort of like a fun game. And um, it sends a bunch of packets. And they brought down Visa and MasterCard and a bunch of other sites. They could not bring down Amazon. They tried. 
But as you know, Amazon is really big and really proud of their fault tolerance and redundant services and everything. And the only thing that's ever brought Amazon down is them making a mistake inside their own company. Remember when they went down a few, about a month ago, people asked me, was that an attack from Anonymous? And I said, no, I don't think there's anybody on the planet that could bring Anonymous down except an insider making a stupid mistake. But anyway, um, so they also went down for about a day, one day in 13 hours. And that was from 3,000 attackers working together. Um, and it's hilarious if you read the logs of the IRC channel. They do this from a normal IRC server. All those low orbit ion cannons connect to the IRC server. It's not running the right kind of software. It's not on the right kind of server. So they're always losing their connections. So the IRC channel is nothing but, this thing dropped off again. Who wrote this garbage? My software crashed again. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's happening? I don't know what's happening. Who are we attacking anyway? Is what's actually going on in this storm of confused people taking down MasterCard, but somehow it succeeded. And one widely repeated uh, rumor about that is that one person actually joined who had a real botnet, stolen the usual way of 30,000 machines, and that's why it worked. And that has led to a split inside Anonymous where one of the uh, leaders, Anonymous claims to have no leaders, but now two or three leaders have emerged and they've begun trying to take each other down and become the real leader. And one of them wants to get rid of the mob of teenagers and just have three or four people with botnets taking things down. Because that's, that's the way the criminals do it, and that's the way they think they should do it too. Well, that's the way the other criminals do it, the ones that are doing it for money. These guys are also criminals, but they're doing it for lulls, perhaps to save the world, but mostly just to laugh at everybody. Anyway, um, and that's the kind of attack that Kaspersky knows about. They asked him if he, recently how many um, computers would it take to bring down uh, South Africa, and he said 200,000. And I immediately rebelled. I say, that's as ridiculous. It would take one cell phone. I happen to know that, and I will show you. But if you did it the way Anonymous did it, it'd probably take 